Mighty Ox Trading presents an interview with Josh, CTO of Blue Sky Trading. Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today we have a first here at Mighty Ox Trading, our first interview. So we'll start this off. We have Josh from Blue Sky Trading Company joining us today. Hello Josh, thank you for joining us. Sure. Hi, how's it going? Pretty good. So I do want to thank you for joining us, being my first interview. Um, so let's get to know you a bit. You're, of course, from Blue Sky. And I see your name on just about everything that comes out. Do you have an official position there? And how did you come to be a part of uh, Blue Sky Trading Company? Hi, I am the CTO of Blue Sky. And I, I'm a software developer by trade normally. I've been doing uh, professional software development for over 20 years. And um, basically a few years ago, I got into the trading game and I got really interested in it. And then I followed a path I think probably a lot of the people listening have followed, um, you know, having trouble with it, learning. And then you, I finally landed in futures and I, I fell in love with it. And I found, you know, other funded programs and I went through a whole slew of those. Um, but eventually I started going into my own account and doing well. And at the same time, I always had in mind um, possibly creating one of these funded programs where instead of ever using a uh, simulation account, instead really sticking to um, live funding all the time. So just fundamentally as a business, the, uh, the traders are aligned with our goals. And every little decision that we end up making is about if someone gets funded, how can we make sure they succeed? That way, it, it's just everyone's goals are aligned. And I think I think it, it was a better idea um, for me anyway. It, it, it makes me feel more comfortable with the whole process. That makes, uh, that makes good sense. Yeah, I know Blue Sky does not have the whole live sim that most of the other competitors out there do. So this was actually getting into... Uh, starting your own prop or being part of a uh, prop was actually me, uh, was actually a goal for you. Yeah, it was a goal for me, but sort of that sort of leaned into starting my own with another ha having another company that I have uh, for software development was going to be. It, I always saw it as it, you know it was going to take a lot more effort if I you know doing it alone, finding the right people to work with doing all that was going to be a lot more effort. And I luckily got in touch with uh, Blue Sky um, when they were just kind of starting out, um, finding out they were literally 15 minutes away from where I lived. <laughs> uh, and I knew with my tech background, I could, I really wanted to exercise that in this space and make a really good experience for um, traders. But I needed people who already had, um, affiliation with brokerages had everything in order and they were exactly what I was looking for because um, they were using live funding too. They had no interest in live sim as well. So we, you know, our values aligned there and, you know, I went in there and I'm like, let's, let's, we, we all kind of talked about it and I said, I can, you know, redo all the tech and I, I see a lot of use for tech going forward. Um, so that's what we did. And I basically partnered with them now. Um, and we've been just, you know, pulling all nighters for five months, six months since I've, uh, joined and it's, it's been going really well and we're really happy with the progress and the growth. Yeah. I was kind of following blue skies growth as well. You know, I've, I've known Mike and, uh, was on his discord server and was watching kind of the progress and it does definitely seem like you coming in definitely solidified the whole thing. It seems like there's been a lot, of, you know, a lot smoother moves since that. If I could say that, that may have sounded bad, but it seems like everything's come together in the last few months. It's been, you know, a, a pleasure to watch it kind of grow from the start. So, um, you said you, you know, you started trading a few years back. How long have you been trading and how did you start? And then how did you get into futures? Yeah, so um, I guess about three years ago is when I, I really took a deeper dive into it. And I, I got started in a path that, I, you know, 
I wish it wasn't the path I got started on, but that's where it's led me. And it was in equities. And, you know, I got hooked on one of the YouTubers that promises too much, um, but it makes it look easy. Um, I'm not going to mention names, but I think they had good intention. But overall, it just it it. it I kind of got rooted in some bad habits with um, chasing and scalping and taking too many executions. So my process has been pretty much from that point is working backwards to really put risk management first and everything like that. And I think a lot of people get stuck in that because a lot of the marketing online works the best for um, scalping or quick money or acting like this is something that anyone can do in a couple of days. And I think you and I and many listeners are going to know that that's just not the case. Um, it's, it's all about, figuring out how to survive for a long period of time and not, um, not just, you're not just going to make quick money all the time. You might do it once and remember that, but that's going to burn you in the future if you, uh, keep that as a habit. So from there, I eventually heard about futures through some friends I had met and I always kind of put futures in sort of a bubble of, uh, options or just more complexity than equities. So I, I never really gave it the time I think it deserved um, because it's really not when it comes down to the trading aspects of it, the it being a contract and not a share uh, really doesn't add any complexity to intraday executions. And uh, I think when people realize that they can see all the rest of the benefits that futures markets provide you, um, including while there's manipulation, it's, it's harder to do. And the, C the CME is a lot more aggressive about, um, shutting it down, I think from what I've seen, and there's not multiple markets, um, selling your order flow data. And it's, there's, there's just a lot more ways to weasel, I think in, in, uh, you know, in equities. Right. And I always, I always tell people, I think futures are easier just because, you know, you can go long or short easily. You don't have to find shares to borrow or play a borrowing fee and short. And plus, you know, if someone has a nine to five job that doesn't allow them to trade during the day, it can still trade in the evenings or it might be a little harder. But, you know, it's it. I think it's just way easier than stocks, equities and other things because of, of yeah. stuff like that as well. I think it's great to be able to, um, obviously you need the full margin to hold through closing hours, but the idea that I can set a stop and hold an overnight trade and know that that stop's going to hit when I'm sleeping and I'm not going to wake up to a gap that, you know, kills my account, um, gives definitely another option to, like you said, people that just can't trade during normal market hours. Exactly. So now you, I know you just said you were a former prop trader. So you, I take it you took that path originally with futures with other other firms before. Yeah, I've probably been through all of them, you know, <laughs> and had my own struggles with it. And, you know, eventually I started having the right introspection and the correct strategies to um, kind of maneuver myself into one, not needing those programs anymore, um, but to um, not being caught in that cycle of trying to find the next prop firm's coupon to, uh, um, you know, jump from one to one to the next. And really that's sort of what I, that's, that's how we see blue sky is I'm, I'm interested in having the best traders stay with us somehow. So our whole business model is going to be around continuing to find ways for why would a great trader stay with, uh, firm like us you know that, that was actually like, going to be my next reasons. question mm -hmm. yeah that's gonna be my next question is why should a successful trader either stay with a prop firm or even join a prop firm now i know one of your things as i noticed is that your uh, split goes up as the trader earns more money you start off at 80 20 goes up to 85 90 and i think that it's something about a custom offer after that mm -hmm. so but is there any other, uh, you know, any other thoughts of why a trader should stick with you instead of opening their own brokerage accounts? I think there's a, there's a, I'm not delirious about the idea that, you know, 
there's always going to be a point where a trader is just good enough and they're not going to have a need for anybody. They're not going to depend on anybody. They're going to have enough capital to do anything they want and they don't need a team around them. Um, I think you always want someone around you as a friend uh, to, you know, be held accountable to and to have discussions with because most people, if you're like myself, I don't, there's no one in my, I, while I can talk to my, you know, my friends and family about how I'm feeling, they, they can't relate. You can't relate to a trader unless you are a trader um, and you've been in the trenches and you've been through this. Um, so that's always important. But for what I, for what I see is trying to find those intermediate traders that are looking to take another level up and they can't do it on their own. And I, I think more in the, of us, uh, I think more uh, that we are like a traditional prop firm in the sense that when you pass, we're going to reach out to you and personally, and we're going to, we're going to ask again, it's optional. You know, do you want to, do you want to have a one-on-one -on -one call with us to get started here? We'll go over what your evaluation look like. Um, our daily loss limit doesn't fail you and fund it, and it, it will be set the same that you had in your evaluation account. But we might look at your trade um, history and give you suggestions and say, look, it, it, it looks like, you know, just roughly, it's more complicated than this, but, you know, you hit $500 of drawdown. Um, when you do that, you tend to not recover from that. And it kind of sends you down a world, you know, it sends you down a path of failure. So do you want to, you know, we suggest you to contact the brokerage because again, we are not in control of your account in that way. So we suggest that you contact the brokerage and this is what the daily loss limit should be. Um, but again, it's optional. We're not going to force you to do it. We gave you parameters when you signed up and that's, we'll stick to them. But I think a lot of people can gain a lot of value. And I think a lot of people enjoy the fact that there's someone possibly looking out for them. You know, if, if you leave a, you know, we have people watching the desk and if, if you leave a trade on and that doesn't seem like you meant to leave that trade on, we're not going to close it out for you, but we will try to get a hold of you if we see something abnormal happening. Um, and just check to make sure that that wasn't an accident and you left the house. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of things that just fundamentally, because we have interest in seeing you. Uh, get to a point where you, you can start taking withdrawals. Um, and the fact that we benefit from that as well, uh, really, I think it, it sort of changes the perspective of all the little decisions that we've been making as far as like, oh, what's a really good idea to, for us to save money and make more money? It comes down to, well, how do we really keep these funded traders that are good um, to perform better for a long period of time? And even beyond that, um, we're upfront about the fact that not only do we want to share in that uh, withdrawal, the withdrawals, um, we, we're you know we're we're looking to copy trade our best traders. Um, that's that's also another source of revenue for us, and that sort of gets into as you make more. Um, that's definitely the the formal agreement with you. We will um, step you up in that manner, but you know. We're, we're, we're just traders and we're people. And if we see you're doing really well, um, a lot of different things can happen when you're in funded that we can do to support you regarding um, contract sizes and everything else. Uh, I'm, we're not, we're not going to make you re, retake tests to increase your leverage if you're really hitting limits. You know, we're not going to make you start over in, the, in an evaluation. We're, we're, you're, you're basically part of the team once you're funded and we're, we're trying to support you there. Wow, that's really awesome. Yeah, I definitely think you're the only prop that would actually has people on a desk looking at people's trades to to watch for what you just mentioned like if someone has a trade on that they maybe forgot about or something that's the first i've ever heard of that so that really makes blue sky unique in that way that is you really are sounding like that it, you are really out for the trader whereas a lot of these companies i don't want to say anything bad but they do maybe don't profit as much if they're on live sim and so on, but we'll just go over mm -hmm. there. Um, so I think it's just fundamental. I, it's just, I, I don't think any of these other companies have, uh, are intending to be, uh, bad by, by any means. I, it's just more, you know, it, it doesn't hurt them. If you're in a live sim environment, you know what I mean? Yeah. They might want you to succeed because, you know, they, they might have similar goals in mind in some ways, but when it comes down to it, they don't care how much you lose. 
right. you know, to, to that extent. So like if you, if you lose everything, it just, it, it doesn't mean anything to their bottom line. And my, you could, you could obviously say that, you know, they don't have to worry about paying out that person that maybe never, um, you know, paying out of essentially pocket for a person that, um, maybe was never going to make it. So for us, it's like, well, how can we turn someone that has potential, um, into someone that can maybe do this in in a long term way because they passed our evaluation and we want to see that through, you know. Absolutely. So, what advice? Since you see both sides now, yourself as a trader, and you now you're also can see what other you know, other people are doing. What advice do would you give the traders to pass an eval, whether it's with Blue Sky or a, any any prop? So I think I have a. I know I've only been trading a few years, but I'm I'm sort of one of those obsessive people um, where I put in three times the amount of hours that I should <laughs> on anything because I obsess. And I, I think a lot of people can relate to that, especially with this, because it's, you know, it's so enjoyable um, to to figure this stuff out. It's like a huge puzzle that's always changing. Um, but I do see tons and tons of failure, and I talk to tons and tons of traders because I just enjoy it too you know it's not it's not even just um i learn from it you know i learn from others failures and i i i'm very empathetic in that way and i think it helps me grow as a trader to be able to be in this position um so the biggest thing is slow down that if i had two words there would be just people need to slow down they are very anxious i think about i think most people are in a position where they didn't do well with their own money they're in they're starting to try a funded program and they're trying to just get to that payout as quickly as possible. What's the maximum amount of money I, I can make in a day to pass this in the minimum amount of time. And that's not what you do in a marathon. You know, you don't want to sprint off the line. You want to set your pace and keep your pace. And while you have a certain minimum of days to pass this thing, um, people really need to know that, you know, yes, it's it's four to eight days to pass for us. So use that time. You know what I mean? Don't just don't just uh, throw it out as oh, this is a waste. I just need to be in funded so I can be making real money. It's like no, no. Look at this at, at, as the next year or the next ten years. Like, what is what is your long term goal on this? You have to set a pace. Um, and why not start with those first eight days? And w when people usually look at these things, they're they're dividing. What's the max amount I should make to pass this thing in the minimum amount of time? And I, I, I suggest kind of turn that around and say, how can I situate this thing so I don't blow it up? You know, divide how many days I could have losses in a row without failing, because that's that's what you want out of your account when when you're when you're uh, funded. Most traders are definitely um you know they have trouble passing and they have trouble holding an account and getting to fund it is not the goal getting to fund it is just your 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 entry into the door you know you, you have a long path there it's it's very easy to um it, it's much easier to get in there and start making some money but it's not easy to get in there make money and keep it and continue to grow it that's the most difficult part. So really it's, it always comes down to risk first, slow down, reduce your contract size, right? I mean, we, we give you a lot of contracts and you can use them, but, um, I myself focus mostly on, on micros because when I'm starting a day, I, it, micros are a great thing and I don't think people appreciate them enough. They're most people are just trying to over leverage and pass this thing and get their payout. And it's just, Everything about that in your psychology is going to work against you in the long term. I'm so glad you mentioned micros because it was actually on my list here to mention because there's actually been controversy in the prop firm space of these content creators. Some of them saying that people that use micros are sissies, aren't real traders, etc. And it's just like it's getting into these heads of newer traders and I'm trying to convince people micros are a great way to start you know even trading nq i look at the atr and if the atr is above a certain level i switch to micros i go to five micros instead of a full nq contract 
And I just think, especially if you're brand new to trading, micros is where you should start. And that's my opinion. Yeah. You know? Oh, I, I, I think people underestimate how they should probably stick to micros for, or they, they shouldn't even think about when are they switching to minis. I, I would, I know a lot of professional traders that do stick to micros. They make a lot. You can make a lot on micros people. And when you size down that feeling you have, um, when you're the most common thing I would say I see is, um, one over leveraging two over trading. Um, and that all points to just not having a plan or any strategy and you're not sure when or when you shouldn't be in, um, you just kind of get these glimpses of green and you think maybe you're doing it right because you, you might get lucky on a green every now and then. But if you're really tracking your stats, you're, you're going to see that that's not working out over time. Um, but with those two things, it's really just if you size down enough and you're not in a putting yourself in a place where you need to have a really tight stop or you're going to lose your account, you're going to make better choices. You're going to, you're going to give it the room that um, whatever market you're trading in needs for wiggle room. I mean, otherwise you're, you're literally sitting in that territory that algos are just um, sharking for you. You know, they're, they're, they can easily whip you out. They just go a couple points and that was it. And then you're, you're done. And then you're getting back in and then they, they stop on you. And I, it's just, it's a, I think everyone knows what I'm talking about and it's a cycle that people put themselves in and they're just not going to get anywhere. It's just, when I see that there's, there's almost zero chance of success. I totally understand that. I, I know, you know, I, I move my stops too close. So I definitely understand what you're saying. And then when I switch to micros, I'm, I'm more lenient because I'm, mm -hmm. so I'm more risk averse. I'm not the gambler type. I'm too risk averse and it costs me. So switching to micros is, is one of my uh, ways that I combat that. Yeah. Um, I'd love to, you know, outside of the interview, you know, reach out to me and we can, we could, I'm happy to talk to you about it because I, I think I have a lot of insight because of what I see and the patterns I see, it's definitely fortified helping people with their um, risk management and sort of finding the triggers in themselves to either, you know, it, like you said, people are usually not centered. They're either risk adverse or the complete opposite. And as, as a good trader, you have to be a little bit of both. Yeah. So, um, and a lot of that for me, it's like, I, I try to compare it to poker when you're looking at someone else, it's, you know, what does someone else's tell where you know you're going to make a certain action? You know, that person's bluffing because they rub their ear, you know. Um, don't discount that for having introspection um, on, for yourself, you know. If you sense yourself squeezing the mouse, leaning forward, um, and then you start making bad decisions, then you need to treat it like a trade where that's your trigger, squeezing the mouse and leaning forward, and you have a reaction like what's your step for when that happens and most of the time that should be step up force your legs to move and get you know get the hell out of the house and then when you know you're not in that state anymore and you can make rational decisions and only then you can go back in the house you know uh, i think people really need those hard cuts and a clear trigger that's objective to um be added to their trading plans I really like that insight. So that's a very unique perspective, and I like that. Yeah. Um, it, there's a lot of things people could do that are like that. And really, I think a lot of people who are willing to put in that work um, can benefit there. And I feel like a lot of people are lost. A lot of the marketing that wins online is the stuff, again, that makes you quick money. You know, what's, what's the uh, strategy that's going to make you a million dollars tomorrow? That's the thing that's going to get the most YouTube views. Yep, I agree. You know, so I think it's it's sort of like, um, you know, not to get political, but how the news works, you know, it's the news is going to show you whatever you want to see the most of. And sometimes that that might not be uh, what's best for the country in a way, you know, but it's that's that's what you see because people want to see it. It it brings views. It brings everything else. And then now that's the standard. So I think the same thing kind of happens with um, trading and a lot of YouTube channels. So I do, I appreciate what you do and the way you present it and you're not, 
you're not getting so grace aggressive and you know saying oh i just pulled ten thousand dollar days every day and then just cutting the days where you're red i think a big part of trading is understanding red is okay that's part of the spectrum of what your pnl is going to be every day and understanding you can end the day red you know this isn't like you're doing you're a contractor and you're doing a contract job and you messed up the bathroom and you need to just stick around and pull an all-nighter to fix it that's not how trading works having that mentality is going to work against you. So accept accepting red and not ever thinking I'm going to recover from red, but I have a hard stop and I'm done is, is huge in, in, uh, shifting your, uh, trading around to be successful. Those are excellent points. And I do thank you for saying what you said about how I do it. I appreciate that very much. So let's move on to a little bit more more questions about Blue Sky. Now, my next one on the list here, you've kind of already touched, I think, on just about everything. But if there's anything else, what would you say makes Blue Sky different? And if you want to summarize your earlier thoughts or if there's anything you feel you didn't already mention, what makes I think Blue I covered it mostly. Yeah, um, yeah it, it really comes down to I just want to be on the side of the traders, however I can be. Clearly, we're a business and we're trying to be profitable. And there is, to some level, the evaluation and the reset process helps us cover the risk that we put on a trader. Because, you know, we're, we're essentially taking roughly, you know, on a $150 or $200 account size, a risk of $2,000 if they pass, right? So fundamentally, you can imagine... When you're, you know, as traders, we're all doing risk management and stuff like that. So I'm sure everyone's thinking in their head, you know, well, how do I mitigate the $2,000 of risk? You know what I mean? So when they pass, that becomes the business model. Like, how do I mitigate $2,000 of risk? And then how do I take that trader that has potential and coach them optionally again? I know some people have their own thing and they just want the funding and I get that. But what we're really trying to offer and what we're going to continue to focus on is providing, uh, a team to work with people to reach out to someone who's watching over you and you know someone who fundamentally cares because it affects our bottom line that makes a lot of sense um what did you what have you found to be the biggest challenge in building blue sky from where it's been to where it's at now uh, there's some antiquated systems that we have to integrate with on the tech technical portion of it. Um, but that, you know, that you get through that, but I, most of the figuring out how we convey our message, you know, that, that, that's definitely a big part of it because a lot of people I think come to us and clearly we're in the same space as a lot of funded programs. But for me, it's like a lot of people come and they're like, well, this program has this number for daily loss and like why don't you do it that way and for me you know we're starting we we needed to start with um a more difficult program and move towards an easier program if we can because going the other way is not exactly a the best pr <laughs> you know what i mean right so right now we're, we're keeping it on the tough side monitoring the data and if we can loosen it we will um if it makes sense so um dealing with people coming over and being like, why don't you make it like this and this and that? And I'm like, look, this is what we do. You know, we're, we're keeping our head kind of down and just thinking about what makes the most sense and not trying to just be another copy and paste of another funded program. We're just trying to think outside the box and think in more traditional prop firm terms. Cause I think, the, I think the, I think the marketplace for funded programs, um, oh, who was it? Top Step First. I think, you know, they came out as a prop firm and, you know, I have nothing bad to say about them. Um, but I think it it spawned a bunch of um, kind of live sim uh, copycats. Yeah. You know? It's really blown up to in where, the last two years. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's, a, there's a place for it. I mean, there's a place for that kind of a model where you just want some funding and you don't care about anything else. You know, but maybe that's not exactly who we are. You know, for us, it's more of I want to see us grow a core team of traders that help each other out and, and have a community that's real, um, that is more aligned again with the traditional prop firm idea. Because I think there's a lot of value in that traditional prop firm idea. And I think 
a lot of traders want a team and they want coaching and there's no the the education again we're not we're not we don't provide an education in that sense of like here take here's a strategy or anything like that it's 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 much more on the coaching side of lean much more into the psychological portion of it clearly we have we can help you with with market structure but we're we're definitely very advanced in that but it it comes down to risk management someone watching over you coaching you and you know just having feeling like you have responsibility to someone and not just it's just some account online that you know you're just another number right and scaling that that that's going to be the interesting part because we are growing and we're scaling it well you know i'm bringing outside coaches in um to help us uh you one of them is uh um he, he runs a lot of our youtube weekly seminars right now and then we have mike you know as well and myself and it it people i can trust you know what i mean so I, i'm bringing these people in and growing that team, I don't think is going to be a problem because I think a lot of people resonate with what we're trying to do, and they appreciate us. That's uh, that sounds perfect. I mean, it really does sound like you are different than just about everybody else out there. I know. I mean, there's other companies that offer coaching and whatnot, but it really sounds like you are so trader based instead of just profit, just profit based. You know, you have a good balance. So has anything surprised you as you've been building this? Has there been any surprises that you just didn't expect or just whether it's the way the traders trade, whether it's in the building of the business, has there been any surprises? Mm -hmm. Um, I think I was so, I, I think like everyone else, you've contrasted and compared and probably tried every single funded program or gotten a taste of every style. Um, so I, I, I felt pretty confident understanding exactly what I was getting into. There were some behind the scenes things that, it, you know, the things that you know that you don't know yet I was expecting, um, which probably goes to your point of what are the surprises. Uh, but really, not really. It, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's just focusing on traders. Um, I've, I've been in tech for so long. You know, I knew exactly what I was going to do, building out the website. And a lot, a big portion of what I wanted to do was, um, which we were achieving, is automate and self-service as much as possible. And we have a lot of cool stuff coming down the line in that regard. Um, I plan on um, releasing some stuff. I can't really go into detail yet, but it's in the works. But, you know, it's there's a lot of third-party services that you need in trading. There's a whole slew of them, and I build software for a living, and I've done it for over 20 years. So, and I'm super enthusiastic about it, just as much as I am about my trading. And I I plan on building as much of that tooling as an as a Blue Sky branded product. And I'm not talking about you know necessarily partnering with other companies to just kind of bring it in and give you a free code, or you know, I'm talking about like a full integration for your entire trading process as an in-house um, tool. That sounds pretty awesome. I, I know it sounds kind of abstract, but I'm sure most of your listeners understand what I'm saying when I'm saying, you know, there's a whole slew of products everyone's using for news and, you know, journaling and all that kind of stuff. So if you can imagine, we're connected to your trade data too. So all of that together, uh, I think we can produce an experience that, um, is sort of a one-stop shop. Yeah, something streamlined. I mean, I know how many different programs and apps I have to use it. Luckily, I, you know, I have a really good computer that I know other people complain about slowing down their computers when they're trying to do too much and all that. So something something streamlined will be excellent. You know, when that's yeah, be. yeah. I mean, don't don't expect us to make a trading platform ourselves. I'm not right. talking about that. I'm just right. talking more of, you know, just everything you need. It's just less confusing. Yeah. People And then when we do that, everything we can do to integrate, automate, lets us spend any manpower we have on high-end um, trader, yeah. uh, like management and communication. Like having to talk to someone should only be about trading, you know, or 
the anomalies that happen where they need to talk to someone because we're always there, of course, but it's just, how can we get that out of the way? So our team is mostly made up of high end traders that can talk to you about trading for whatever you need for that. That makes good sense. Um, one of the unique things about blue sky, I don't think any other, uh, prop has this is you guys have the ice exchange and the Eurex, which I thought was, I guess I've heard other people talk about those like, and liking those. Have you found that offering those or have a lot of people been testing the water yeah. with those or using those? Yeah, that was huge actually. Um, well, I guess one thing I was surprised about, I knew there was a lot of international traders, but as an English only speaking person, I, uh, um, I really didn't realize just how many futures traders there are um, joining prop firms internationally. And we have, we have tons of people from Italy and Spain, um, France, and they're, they were very excited and they asked us a lot, can we get your ex, you know? And we were able to put that together with a clearinghouse that could offer that. And that, that's been a big, that was, that's been a big demand. That has been really great. I think for those traders that want to trade um, more towards their time zone, you know, I think fundamentally that's what it comes down to. They want to be involved in futures trading, but you know, the sessions don't line with their uh, schedule and Eurex gives them that. And it's been, it's been a huge help. Uh, we're still just waiting on rhythmic to open that up in the evaluation process because their evaluation servers don't support that. But, um, once you pass in our funded program, yeah, you get the full access to the uh, all the Eurex products and ICE, as you said. You know, it's I don't I've never actually traded those products myself, but we definitely have some successful traders that do. Yeah, also I was one, I was wondering how many people dive into that because, like I said, I've never even looked at it until I saw it was available to me. Uh, I knew ICE was like this expense every every time everyone asks another prop firm about ice they're like that's too expensive for the data so. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah the data is more expensive but again it's sort of we're this is us casting a wide net mm -hmm. to try to find good traders so it's worth it you know if, yeah. if that's what they do and they can get there and they can prove themselves um it all it all makes it worth it absolutely yeah i know a big time coffee trader that's interested because you have ice that might be getting involved sometime soon Okay, well, I thank you, Josh, for joining me today. I really appreciate it being my first interview. And yeah, thank um, you. Also, for anyone that wants to check out Blue Sky, we down below will be a link to the Discord as well as a link and code to get 25% off any of the evaluations there exclusively with Mighty Ox Trading. So once again, Josh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.